good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kyle Mullen. I am the AVP of Data Center Solutions Architects here at CDI. I'm joined by Jim Shook, Director of Cybersecurity Practice at Dell Technologies. Jim, that was an awesome session on CDI's rapid control uh, assessment offerings. Uh, CDI actually came up with the RCA partly because we noticed ransomware was really becoming a, you know, a major issue within our customers. And it seems like ransomware is really everywhere nowadays. I guess, what are you hearing from the CIOs and the CIOs in your account? Yeah, Kyle, thanks again for the opportunity to be here with you and CDI and to talk about these things today, very near and dear to, to what we do. So we're really seeing just a continued, I think, maturity and growth in this space. I think back to the start of our practice six years ago, having to really explain what these attacks were. And now there's more of a recognition that sometimes the bad guys are going to be successful and the CIOs and CISOs just really want to understand, number one, what does that really look like? What are they doing? What are the tactics? And then number two, do they have gaps? And if so, kind of how can we help fill those gaps? So a lot of times we'll tee up these conversations around the NIST cybersecurity framework. We're really focused in our data protection team around uh, recovery capabilities. So again, lots of stuff going on to keep the bad actors out and protect and detect. We're more about recovery. And so that's where we've had our, our power protect cyber recovery solution and We'll spend a lot of time kind of talking about those recovery capabilities, the planning and the other techniques that go with it. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So you mentioned data protection, the ability to restore cyber recovery solution, right? So CDI as a premier hybrid solutions provider, right? You know, we, we lead with what we consider to be the best of breed solutions and partners in, in the respective markets, in this case, data protection and security. You know, total honesty, right? Dell. When I think of Dell, security isn't necessarily the first thing that comes to my mind, right? You know, we, we do a ton of business with you guys around, you know, converged, hyper-converged solutions. What's Dell doing differently in the data protection and security space? So it's a good point. And, you know, we've got a lot of um, components to, to Dell. So SecureWorks and you know, Carbon Black and everything really more focused, say, than we would be in data protection. For us, as I said, it's really about recovery. And uh, you may know, not think of us first, but practice has been six years. We've had solution in, in market for over five and have hundreds of customers in the space, really are the leaders by far here. And I would say th there's three things we talk about that we do differently, and we'll call them the three I's. It's isolation, immutability, and intelligence. So what we're doing is we're creating a data vault where we make a copy of the most critical applications and data, and we secure that. So that's our isolated portion. It's an air-gapped data vault uh, physical isolation and logical isolation. Immutability, make it really, really difficult for anybody to delete or change a copy of data once it's in that vault. So you'll hear a lot of organizations talk about immutability, uh, retention lock, get to be really careful because there's no great standard out there. Ours is really the most advanced in terms of what we do to protect that data and even going to the point where we're regarding against NTP style attacks, which is really interesting. And then the intelligence, so whatever you put in the vault is going to be secure, but how do you know that the data is good? What if it was bad before we put it in? So with our in analytics, we'll take a look at that data, not just the metadata, but the full content. We'll do chunking and similarity algorithms. We'll measure entropy. We're really giving that full picture to understand that the data you have is good. So those three pieces, very different from other approaches in this space, which really amount to kind of hardening a backup or architecting that that air gap with the three eyes, and that, that makes a much more complete solution. Interesting. Okay, so that's immutability, isolation, and intelligence, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, what about regulatory and compliance requirements? I get that often as well. So for me, near and dear to my heart, I, I practiced law for a long time, and my practice has always been about those pieces too. You know, I would say we do a couple of things. Um, we very much keep up with everything going on worldwide so we can help talk with our customers about what is required today, which I would say from a regulatory standpoint, that's a, that's a minimum, right? You really want to look at what your risk profile is, but you have to meet those things and you have to be able to prove them. That's the whole regulatory structure. So the features that we have, the capabilities that we have, how those map to the requirements, we'll talk about that a lot. But I think what we've done Differently in this space is we've been partnering with a group called Sheltered Harbor, which is a quasi-regulatory standards group in the U.S. and the financial services industry. So Sheltered Harbor has developed a, a full spec. Um, it's a nonprofit that was founded by banks, credit unions, um, clearinghouses, and 
some other financial institutions to deal with exactly this risk that we're talking about. So they have a full spec that identifies the data that needs to be protected to offer basic services, the capabilities that a vault needs to have so that it can actually protect the data against even the worst bad actors, and then recovery and uh, resilience and restoration platform so that if there is an event going in, getting that data and being able to use it to provide those services. So we've partnered with them, very proud of the work that we've done with them. And then the solution I mentioned to you, the Power Protect Cyber Recovery, the only solution in the world that's been endorsed to, to meet their specifications. So a little bit of a different spin, I think, than what a lot of people are doing, but very proud of the work that we've done in that space. That's very interesting. I guess, you know, back to basics, how about from a conversation standpoint, right? I've been in this industry 12, 12 plus years now, sold a lot of data protection, a lot of Dell. Um, it, it seems like the, the initiatives are being driven outside of just the IT department nowadays, right? These, these requirements and discussions are really coming from the business leaders, you know, board of directors, things of that nature. Are you seeing the same thing with your customers? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, going back, there's always occasions where we talk with the board or, or you know, C-level type person. I think over the last year, especially, and some of it kind of seemed like it started, you probably saw it too, maybe with more of the work from home um, initiatives. I think part of it is that organizations, they knew it, but they really started to put the pieces together that were all digitally oriented. And these bad actors are going after those bits and bytes and you know, make those pieces connect together, the business is at risk. This isn't really an IT problem. This is this is a business problem. Somebody gets in and destroys the lifeblood of your business, that's trouble. And I think the businesses start to recognize it. And then there were two events, and Kyle should see if you kind of saw these two. In October, OFAC in the, in the Department of Treasury, the Office of Foreign Asset Control, came out with an advisory that said, hey, if you're paying a ransom, you may be violating U.S. law. Depends on who's getting the payment. And that really stirred up a lot of interest, I think, from, from boards uh, going, my gosh, you know, we always thought, look, our worst case scenario, we pay a ransom, and now they're right, saying that right. against the law, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the third piece really was, I think, solar winds. So just the sophistication of the attack and just very front and center, a nation state uh, involved in these things. Uh, Microsoft came out, I think, last week and said they think maybe a thousand people worked on that malware. So just the, the staggering wow. in terms of the sophistication and levels and all those things kind of drove the business to, to be a little bit more concerned. I don't know if you saw any other events uh, that might have driven that, but those three pieces really seem to have moved the, the board and the, the business side of the C-suite to worry about these attacks. Very interesting. Yeah, well... Um, I think we're, we're coming up on time here, but I, I really appreciate your time, Jim. This was, this was great, very informative. Hopefully everybody agrees and um, very excited to see what we got coming for the rest of the day. So appreciate your time, Jim. Same here. And thank you very much for the time and the opportunity, Kyle. All right. Talk soon.